Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an interactive timeline when a user is scrolling down the page. This can be very helpful to showcase a series of events, or in this case, some blog post over a timeline. We've tried a lot of different timeline widgets or plugins uh, for WordPress, but we found that this one right here by Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor was the best one out there on the market for our use cases. So let me show you some examples on their website right here. If you go over to the ultimate add-ons for Elementor, just click on widgets and you can see these are all the different widgets that they have. If you scroll down here and just click on timeline, this is going to bring you to a demo. And as you can see right here, if you scroll down, it's highlighting when the user is scrolling and these are either blog posts or custom post types, whatever it may be. And the thing I do like about this um, widget compared to all the other ones out there is they have this query builder. They have a lot of functionality built in. And if you scroll down here, some more examples. Here's an example of using the timeline on a client website. The client has a whole bunch of different press releases and they wanted to have a timeline when the user scrolls, you can see it's by date. So here's December, 2020, you scroll down, here's 2019. And each one of these clicks to a custom post type, or like I said, it could be a regular blog feed or pages or whatever it may be. So in this case, if you clicked on one of these, it goes to a custom post type talking about the article, you can read it here, view the project. So now I'm gonna show you how to use this tool and all the different options and configurations you can do. So let's just jump right into it. Here we are on the back end of the website. After you've purchased the plugin, installed, activated, now you can bring that widget into your Elementor website. So you just go into your Elementor tools, you can just type in the word time and you're gonna see this new widget called timeline. Just click and drag that over. So now let's go ahead and configure this. I'm gonna go through most of these settings so you can get an idea of what this plugin offers. The first thing you need to configure is, do you want it to be custom or post? So if you select post, you're gonna see it pulls in your regular blog post. Now this widget isn't just tied to blog post or custom types or anything like that. If you want, you can actually just create regular kind of static information here. So that's what custom is. So if you go under timeline items, you're gonna see that this is just pulling in regular static data. So it's not dynamic or anything like that. So you can see right here, you have your dates, which is right here, your heading, and whatever information you want in here. This is the, the bare bones way to do it. And if you click under styling, they give you an option to override some styling here. So I'm thinking in most cases, you probably wanna just select post. And what this is going to do, as you can see, it just pulls in your post feed. By default, it pulls in just six post on the feed. So if you scroll down one, two, three, four, five, and six, that's it. So you can add however many you want. Um, I recommend not adding too many because it's going to have to load all that up on the page. So whatever your use case is, um, you know, I would say keep it under like 20, you know, you don't want to go 20 is a lot. So if I scroll down here, you can see right here, the users are going to have to scroll quite a bit. So depending on your use case, but you just have to remember the more you load on the page, the bigger your page is gonna be size wise. So if you load in like 100, 200, you're gonna run into some performance issues. And they give you the option to do infinite load. I would say in most cases, I don't recommend this because you could see right here, this is just gonna keep loading forever. I mean, we have a lot of blog posts on here. And to see the change, if you click this button right here, preview, it will open up in a preview window. And let me show you how infinite loading works. It just will literally just keep going. You could see right there, that little load animation, it's just gonna load forever. So <laughs> we have a lot and like I said, I, I don't really see most use cases that you would wanna have a timeline with infinite. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And underneath here, query, there's a lot of options in here. So that's what I really do like about this plugin. Um, I have never seen another plugin for timelines that gives you this much uh, functionality. So on their sales page here, that's what this is right here where they talk about a query builder. This gives you the ability to visually create your own custom query basically. So this is, gives you a lot of control. So if you click right here for posts, you could see you could do pages. So this is gonna pull in your pages instead of your blog post. And then this is gonna list any um, custom post types you have or anything along those lines. So in this demo website, I have a custom post type for services and speakers. So that would just pull in you know, whatever I have in there. So this, that's uh, on this example right here, this was a press uh, custom post type. 
So we wanted to have it separate from the blog feed or anything like that. So we just pulled in a custom post type called press. So here's where you can do different rules for your filtering. So you can actually exclude categories. So there might be cases where you need to exclude certain categories. You would just do that right here. You just select and it automatically is going to pull up all of your um, different categories here. So you can see right here, I removed one and you can see it removed it right there. So let me go ahead and just wipe all those out. So if you have certain ones, a lot of times if you have uncategorized, I would get rid of that. Because that very first one, you can see I didn't have a category. So you're going to probably want to wipe out anything that's not that doesn't have a category. And same thing with tags. If you have a tag system instead of categories, you could do that same thing here. So we have some tags here we can exclude. And you can also do by author. So you can exclude certain authors if you want. And you can also exclude certain posts manually. So if I type in um, something like an SEO, you can see I have a whole bunch of certain posts so you could do manual excluding here and if you have any sticky posts you can ignore them here you can even offset so what i like about this too is let's say i don't want to show this one for example you could say offset one and what that's going to do is pull that one up here so if i offset two it's going to remove this one and now this is going to be the very first one so let me go ahead and show you so if you have cases where you need to offset it for some reason you could do that right here and just kind of like the regular Elementor settings, you can do order by, you can do descending, ascending, you can do date, title, random, menu order. So probably in most cases you want to do date. Uh, it's, you know, it's a timeline widget, so it's heavily driven by the date. And that's what, oh, sorry here. And that's what this is right here. This is pulling in the uh, post date right here. And so when you scroll down, it's going to descend. We can do ascending so we have old posts all the way back to 2015 so it flips it and if for some reason no posts are found you can change the generic um, error message so you can see right here try a different search you could type in whatever you need right here and they also give you the option to display a search box if no posts are found now if we click on post this is where we're going to start to visually change how this section right here is going to look so simple you can turn on and off the images if you want and they give you the option to change the image size. Uh, I would say most use cases, you're going to want to keep this at full. Um, you can also do custom if you need to. But if you look right here, if you go to something really small, it's going to crop off the image. And so it's going to be a little more uh, difficult to change the aspect ratio. So just keep it at full and that will work in most use cases. And of course, you can toggle on and off the title. And you can also change the excerpt length. So for some reason, 25 is too much. You can do 10. So let's go ahead and just change that back to like a 20. That seems good. And this is one feature I like that I haven't seen any other ones do. You can have the whole link to the complete box. So what that means is you can see right here where, where my cursor is changing. As soon as the user highlights the whole uh, content area right here, it's clickable. So you can have it where it's just text and you can have a read more button. And they give you the option if you don't want it to be clickable, you can turn that off completely. But I would say complete box is probably what most people want because it gives the user um, more opportunities to click. So you're probably going to want to keep this at publish date, but if I change it right here to last modified, you're going to see this is going to change because I did modify that post for some reason uh, after October 27th. So if I click that, it's going to change to July 21st, 2021. So I made a change that day and I would say you probably want to keep it at um, publish date and then they give you the option. This is a little more advanced. Um, I might cover this in a future tutorial, but this is a meta key. So you could pull in all different types of dynamic data here, but that's a more advanced functionality. So I'm gonna just click on publish date and just keep it at whatever I published that blog post. That's the date that's gonna show up right here. And this is also really helpful. They have a lot of different tutorials and information here if you do get lost. Now we're going to jump into the fun part and that is styling up the different colors and the way that when the user navigates down you can change how this functionality works so this is the fun part where you can style up the timeline so as you can see right here you could do left aligned center or right aligned um, it you know it's a personal preference whatever is going to fit uh, the branding for the website so in this case let's just keep it in the center i like the way that looks and you can see right here, depending on what you choose, these options down here are gonna change. So you can change the content to be centered, right. So you're gonna have a whole bunch of different customizations here. And this is nice, because right here, they 
have different uh, responsive modes. So I'm gonna go into responsive mode. So you're gonna see if you go to tablet mode here, it's going to only switch on at mobile. So let me go ahead and change it here. And you see how everything's now left aligned. That is only happening on mobile. So if I change that to tablet and mobile, it's gonna be left aligned on tablet too. So just play around with those settings and you, you have a lot of control right there. And you can see right here, if I go back to tablet mode, it's gonna be right aligned instead of left. So you can switch it right here, change the text. That's, th th they give you a lot of options here, which is nice. And you see that little arrow right there? That's what the card arrow is. You can toggle that on and off and you can change the color of that uh, in, within here. You could do it at the top, the bottom. I think they've thought about every single like little customization with this uh, widget. Let's go back to desktop mode and let's start playing around with some spacing. You're gonna see right here, this is where you're gonna change the spacing in between the content area here and the little uh, button icon right here. Let's kind of change that back. You can change the vertical space. This is a nice option right here where you can change how much space is in between the heading and the content. Let's kind of just keep everything back to default. I kind of like the way the default looked. And now here's where you're gonna get a lot of different options. You can change what your heading tag's gonna be. So these are all gonna be H2s, H3s, whatever your use case is. Uh, let's change it to H2. And just kind of standard Elementor stuff. You can change your colors here. You can do global, description colors. Let's change that. The typography for your heading. I mean, this is kind of just standard stuff. now. You wanna make sure that you do adjust your background color because by default it's like that light gray. So if you have something that might look better, let's say kind of like a bluish, you can change that here. Let's change that to white. Let's change the description to white, full. Here's some box shadow options I give you as well. So you may wanna have a box shadow. So you can see if you increase it right here, it will update here. You can change the color. Let's just turn that off. And the rounded corners you can see right here, if you don't need rounded, you would just zero this out. So just hit zero, now it's a square. And then if you need certain padding, you can do that here. So let's change it to be a little more dramatic so you can see it, so 60. So if you have a design that fits more like a 60, so you can see right here, this is 60 padding all the way around. Let's change that back to like a 20. So that's the default state. If you need to have it where it changes depending on focused or hover, you can do that all right here. So let's say we wanna have the background color or totally different color when someone hovers over it, you can see right here, hover, it changes to a red. So the way it works is when the user is hovering this whole area, that's considered this whole section. So if I move my mouse down here, it's gonna change right here. Now let's jump down to the dates and this is where you're gonna change the color right here. So right now it doesn't have a color. So if I just change that to something like a blue, you can see it right there. And same thing here, you can change it where you can have a different color if you hover, it will change to a color, yeah. So they give you so many options, it's hard to go over everything in this tutorial, but you can see, I think every option you can basically customize with this plugin. Now here's a fun part, you can change the connector. So that's what this is right here. That, that icon right there, that's part of the connector. So let's go ahead and change the icon to something else so you can kind of visually see. I like this. Now you can see it's a gem. And by changing this right here, you're changing the width of the line here, the icon size. You can change that right there the background size, so you can change it if you need it to be wider, you can do that right there. And I would, if you need it to be square, you can hit zero, and now that's gonna take it out of the, um, the rounded, so it's gonna be more like a square. So let's go ahead and change that back to like a 10. Let's go to 60. And what's nice, they have these options right here, so let's switch over into mobile and you can adjust these right here. So if you don't need it to be so wide, you can do that right here. So if you just squeeze that over right here. Now here's something to make sure that you uh, analyze when you start working in mobile. If Let me stretch this out so I can show you what's happening. You see right here the scroll bar, anytime you work on mobile, 
styling and you start to see the scroll bar, that's a bad sign. That means on the front end of the website, the user is going to be able to scroll over right and left. So that's that's not good. When you see that scroll bar, that means you need to adjust something in your mobile settings. So in this case, it was this is too wide and pushing all of this to the right. So let's go ahead and lower that and you see how the scroll bar went away. That's good. So that means the user isn't going to scroll right and left. Let's jump back into desktop mode. Same thing here. You can change the colors of the icon itself and the line. So let's make that line like a red so you can see. So when the user is scrolling down, the timeline is red, but you can actually change this green color right here. So let me show you how to do that. That's called focused. And let's change that to something different so you can see like a blue and like a purple. Let me see. Okay, here's like a purple color. So that's called focused. Default is the color of the line before it's uh, being scrolled down and focused is this color right here. So if I scroll down, you can see right here, it's there. And if you need to change that green color, you see how it's gray by default. And then when the user scrolls down, it turns green. And you can change that setting right here. It's called the icon background color. And so let me change each one of these settings so we can visually see what's going on. So let's change the very first one to yellow. So yellow is all of them by default. But what we want is we want to change that. So when the user scrolls, let's change it to a different color. So that would be icon background color. Let's change that to, let's go to a color we haven't been to, like a green. So you can see, it's gonna change that background color to green. So as soon as it hits it, green. As soon as it hits it, green. So that's nice to have. And then they give you the option to change it on hover as well. Th this is a little overkill in my opinion. You don't wanna have three different colors. I think two is fine. But let's say on hover, you wanna have it go to like a purple. So when you hover over it, it's gonna change to a purple. Let me, let me change it to something a little more dramatic. There's a purple. You can see they give you a lot of options, but if you start to go crazy with the colors, it might not look so good. So let's go ahead and preview this on the front end of the website. So it's green. When I hover over it, that changes the color, that changes color. I'm just giving you an example. I don't think this is a very good use case because your website shouldn't have these many colors, but it's fun to just kind of play around with the settings. So you scroll down, it's going to change to the green. And if I hover, purple. So like I said, I would I don't think there ever really would be a good case where you would want to change this on hover background. But here we are. We have a really colorful timeline now. <laughs> Let's go back into these settings and I think I covered everything under connector and I like how you can change out the icons really easy. So if I just want to have a face, it will change it right there. That, that is really useful to change this. Let me just hit update on here. That's pretty much all the settings underneath styling and under advanced. Um, this widget doesn't have any additional um, settings you need to worry about back here. This is all just the standard uh, Elementor settings back here, so there's nothing to really change. To recap, I would recommend keeping this at post, the content source. Play around with the query builder to get a feed that you want with your post right here. And then the styling, you can go crazy with the styling. Uh, what I definitely recommend is keeping it uh, consistent to your website branding. Uh, I wouldn't go ahead and create something like this unless you have a really fun circus themed website or anything like that. This is a, a bit much and the user is going to get a little confused if you have too many different stylings happening all at once. Just keep it consistent. Like in this example, we just have a really simple dot and there, these colors match here. You know, we didn't add all these different colors when you hover or anything like that. So you can see right here, we made the whole box clickable. Nothing happens when you hover over these. We kept it very simple. This is probably how you're going to want to keep your website uh, timeline. Just keep it very simple like this. And that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new videos like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.